the undergraduate session. For, um, for the people that just joined, uh, the graduate session will start about 45 minutes into the hour. So um, if you're uh, applying to a graduate program, then we'll discuss that later with Dr. Bagheri. Uh, but right now I'll go through the undergraduate, um, uh, basically program overview. And uh, let me start, let me share my screen real quick. All right, so can everybody see my screen? Hopefully, yes. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, perfect. So I'll, st I'll start the presentation. Uh, so I'm an associate professor of uh, electrical and computer engineering at Nazarbayev University. This is actually my second year here. Uh, before this, I taught at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in the United States. And um, I'll, I'll draw some comparisons between, I guess, Nazarbayev University and, and the US schools as we go through the presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, um, I, I'll ask you to hold them until the very end of the presentation, and then we can discuss that um, afterward. All right, so uh, there, there are a couple of undergraduate programs here um, in, in the engineering school. So electrical and computer, obviously, the one that you applied to. Uh, I'm biased, so I think that's the best one. Uh, and then mechanical and aerospace, uh, chemical and material, civil and environmental. And then we also have a Bachelor of Science program as well in robotics and mechatronics. That's more uh, applied and uh, computer science. So um, all of the programs will be undergoing ABET accreditation, which is basically the uh, governing body uh, for engineering education in the United States and worldwide. And we'll do that in the next two years. So hopefully by 2024 or 2025, uh, we should be fully ABET accredited, uh, which means that your diploma will be worth a lot more um, and it will be recognized by companies and, and other universities worldwide. So there's a big push on the, on the level of the administration to get this ABET accreditation uh, rolling and actually uh, implement. So uh, there are some graduate programs. Um, if you want to continue down that path, and um, Nazarbayev University is known for uh, being very loyal to its students. So if you went through the program as an undergraduate and you reapply for a master's or later a PhD, uh, then we, we look at your um, uh, academic, academic performance. And uh, we're actually really, really excited uh, to see Nazarbayev st uh, University students return uh, for their graduate studies. Okay, so um, let me give you a quick campus overview, I guess. Um, this is the side that's facing uh, Mega Silkway. If you've uh, been to Nur Sultan, and if you visited the campus, then um, you, you, you probably know that it's a pretty, pretty large campus. Um, so everything is very close by, uh, which is one of the things that I found very convenient, especially if you're a student or a faculty member living on, on campus. Um, so right as you cross the street um, from this entrance, uh, you have a really big uh, shopping mall, which basically has everything that you need. And uh, on the other side, uh, we have the administration building. And if you cross the road that way, uh, then you have a supermarket where you can buy your groceries. Uh, there are also a number of supermarkets um, on the territory of the campus. So really, you don't really have to leave anywhere to, to buy stuff. Uh, which I find very, very convenient. Uh, now, all of the buildings at Nazarbayev University are joined um, by either glass walkways, uh, which is very nice during the winter uh, when temperatures hit like minus 20. And um, there is a big atrium, which basically connects all of the buildings together. Um, there are all, these are all academic buildings or research buildings. And uh, each building houses um, a, either a school or, or a department. So we are way back over here, and uh, we're in block three, as well as um, some of the things are housed in block seven. So you'll, you'll probably be taking your classes and labs in block three uh, for the most part. So again, really, really nice layout. Um, this is the campus map. I'm sure you've looked at it uh, quite a few times already. On the left, where you see 26 and 24, uh, these are the uh, student dorms. And um, they're, they're actually very nice uh, in terms of accommodations. 
And then you have a glass walkway, which basically goes from the student dorms into the, into the main building. Uh, so as you're walking from your dorm room to, uh, to your classes, um, you can walk in a t-shirt and that would be fine temperature wise, especially in winter, that's, that's a big deal. And uh, here, here's the faculty housing. And again, all of those things are joined together by walkways. Um, and then on the territory of, of the dorms, as well as um, these blocks over here, you have certain shops and things like that where you can buy your groceries. So overall, this is a really nice campus layout. Um, in the summer, it's even more exciting because uh, there's a lot going on. Everything is green um, and you can, you can just stroll in the evenings and, uh, and it's a very relaxed atmosphere. Now, uh, let me give you some department numbers. Uh, we graduate about 70 undergrads. It could be a little bit more from last year. Uh, 30 master's students and about two or three PhD students a year as well as uh, there are some postdoctoral uh, researchers working uh, for the department, but those work directly with faculty members on their research. Now we have faculty both from Kazakhstan and abroad, uh, which is really nice. It's a, it's a very collegial atmosphere and you get to experience a lot of different teaching styles and a lot of different cultures all within, uh, all under one roof, I guess, uh, which is very cool. Now, there, there are a number of specialization areas, uh, which are basically areas where we have our electives and uh, where we have the research that the faculty are doing. Uh, so devices and circuits, that's basically chip design and um, some optimizations. Signal processing, which includes, for example, computer vision, analysis of audio and things like that. Uh, communication systems are big. Um, so like 6G, 5G, and I'll talk about some of the research topics that, that come out of that, uh, which you can actually work with faculty um, on. If, you, if you're interested and you contact faculty, they'll be more than willing to take you on as a research assistant, uh, either paid or unpaid, depending on whether they have a grant uh, currently going on or, or not. So power engineering, uh, basically power distribution, things like that, uh, control systems, um, this is more of a robotics a spin, I guess, on things, but within our department, we all we do a lot of uh, control systems research, and uh, we have electives that cover those topics, and of course, computer engineering, uh, which encompasses pretty much everything. Um, one thing I will note is um, that the laboratory facilities at Nazarbayev University are one of the most impressive ones that I've seen. Um, I've taught at Research One schools in the U.S. Um, I've taught at small, smaller engineering schools, uh, but Nazarbayev University labs are very, very stocked, and uh, they're, they're always faculty that know how to use the equipment um, and, and the supplies. So if you're interested even on working on your personal projects, um, you can always ask a faculty member to help. So we have pretty much everything that you need to succeed in electrical and computer engineering. Now, um, in terms of the courses, um, this is organized on a European credit transfer system, so ECTS. Uh, you basically have to complete 248 credits um, over four or five years, depending on your academic program. And uh, once you complete that, you're, you're basically allowed to graduate. Obviously, uh, there are core courses. So for example, programming, uh, introduction to engineering, uh, those are required. You have to have a C minus or better in your uh, required courses in order to go on to the next level. So just keep that in mind. And uh, you have to maintain at least a 2.0 GPA uh, to, uh, to basically stay at Nazarbayev University, which equates to a C grade or better. Um, so we have uh, programming, then we have circuit theory one and two, which, are, which basically covers analog circuits, something that you've seen in physics probably in your high school. Uh, then we have digital logic design, uh, which is uh, field programmable gate arrays. So programming logic on chips. And uh, well, how does all this computer stuff work? That would be your introduction. Uh, then we go on to signals and systems, um, which is one of, I, I think, the most challenging course. Uh, if, not, if not, yeah, that would be the most challenging course, I guess, in your program. Uh, that's a very theory-heavy course. 
And um, then you have electronic circuits, uh, which is basically covering amplifiers, more analog stuff, and uh, microprocessor systems, which is basically a continuation of digital logic design, where you actually write uh, programming for the microprocessor. You interface with certain circuits and motors and things like that. Um, and this basically covers your first three years. Now, after that, you have what's called an interdisciplinary design project or your senior project, where you can either propose a topic or you pick one that's, picked, that's designed by a faculty member, and you have a full year uh, to complete one project. So you work on a team of up to two people, and uh, this is probably the most exciting thing that you've uh, that you're gonna do. So these three courses, interdisciplinary design project, and then uh, capstone project. So these kind of tie together. And um, the reason why they're exciting is because it's actually a problem that nobody has ever solved before, uh, typically. So you work with faculty members, you, you get stuff right, uh, you experiment, and sometimes you fail, uh, which is also a good learning experience. And we don't really penalize you for failing if you, uh, if you put forth the effort. Um, and it's a good learning experience. So, you know, you have something to uh, look forward to. At the end of the capstone project, you have a fully working product that you yourself have made that you can put on your resume and uh, that gave you a lot of cool experiences. And uh, you can also do independent studies with faculty members. So they can be either on a topic or, or, or something like that. Um, so that's also an exciting experience because typically it's outside of the scope of any course that you're going to take at the university and uh, you design those experiences with the faculty member. So if you're interested in something, then you can certainly pursue it with an independent study. All right. So um, we have a number of really cool electives and um, those are broken up into, for example, devices and circuits. Uh, we go over signals and microwave um, propagation and stuff like that. So uh, then we also go into signal processing, um, either digital signal processing, you have uh, image processing and computer vision, which is also really cool because um, that's, that's my specialty, so I'm a little biased. And uh, cameras are proliferating basically everywhere, and you need to teach a computer how to see. Um, so if you're interested in that, computer vision is the way to go. Uh, then you have wireless communications. Uh, Internet of Things is really, really big. So how do we connect all these devices together and have them talk? Uh, there are a number of faculty that do research um, in, in that area. Um, so we have, we have a very, very, uh, I guess, diverse set of uh, electives that you can take. Now, uh, going to research as an undergrad, you have the opportunity to work with faculty members on their research, which is really, really nice because if you're applying to grad school, um, that's experience that is basically required if you go into, for example, your PhD. And uh, faculty members are more than willing to dedicate some of the tasks on, in their research uh, to undergrads, which is typically not something that you see uh, at institutions um, that, that do research. And typically it's just masters and doctoral students that work on research. But here, um, faculty give you the opportunity to, to work on projects, which I, I find really cool. And um, the, the, the way to get on a research project is uh, to go through all of the faculty profiles. Uh, they're all on the, on the university page. It lists their interests. Uh, so just, you know, you can email the faculty as a student and say, hey, I'm interested in this topic. Would you be willing to uh, have a quick chat with me uh, regarding this? And most, of, most faculty members are uh, really excited to talk to students. So they'll talk to you about their research. And uh, if you're interested, you, you can join the group. Now, I'll uh, highlight some of these things. Um, so wireless power transfer for Internet of Things. That was actually a capstone project where um, you had little uh, Internet of Things devices, for example, uh, temperature probes or humidity probes that harvested the energy from, from the outside world um, through either solar or some had even uh, like a passive RF receiver. 
So from uh, radio waves, you can you can harvest energy to power that device. And um, that ties ties into, for example, new generation solar cells. Um, renewable energy is a big topic. So um, there, there is a lot of variety there. Now, um, also, um, for example, I'll highlight another research topic, reconfigurable intelligent surfaces for 6G wireless networks. Um, in the future, we're, we're looking at antennas that have a microgrid array of uh, tiny little antennas that will be able to follow you as you drive on, for example, a freeway. Uh, so as you're driving and you're on a call, all of those antennas reconfigured to kind of face your direction. And um, that way the signal is gonna stay strong as, as you're doing something important and, and using the bandwidth. Um, now there's also, for example, a lot of noise projects. So noise cancellation, acoustic feedback, uh, those are really, really cool. So that's more uh, signal processing. There's a lot of computer vision projects going on. Um, so you know, if you're interested, you can certainly hop on a topic uh, with with a faculty member, get your feet wet with research. Um, if you're um, if you're really interested in pursuing education further, as as a master's student or a doctoral student, um, then that will be probably uh, very very valuable for you. So, um, most faculty are um, you know active internationally, so they have a lot of academic collaborators outside of Kazakhstan. And um, this is really, really helpful if, for example, you do want to go to grad school outside of Kazakhstan, or um, if you want to go on an internship, or you know you want to do research. Our faculty have all these connections, and uh, if you're really talented and you show them that you can do research, um, that you're a self-starter, you're motivated then um, when it comes time to getting to your internship and things like that, they can recommend you and uh, you can spend a, a summer overseas, which is really cool. Um, we also have a lot of ties into uh, industry. So if you're looking for a job after you graduate, um, if you're looking for internships, then faculty can certainly connect you with our industry partners. And um, for example, Alstom, um, they have a huge, huge presence in the US. Uh, it's a French company that does uh, train controllers. Um, we have some local companies and, and things like that. And most faculty are pretty tied into uh, these things. So like, let's say you want an internship at Garmin, uh, we can throw your resume in, into them and then uh, you, can, you can work a summer abroad. So um, that's kind of like the, the outline that I wanted to give you. So if you guys have any questions, I can answer them right now. Um, you're also free to contact me by email if, if you have a question that arises uh, later, for example. Uh, you can always email me, and I'm usually pretty good at responding. So um, I'll pass the floor on to you. Thank you, dear professor. Mm -hmm. Dear participants, you have the opportunity to ask your questions regarding the bachelor programs in our school and the graduate programs. So maybe in general about the school. Okay. Or you can leave your questions for Q and A part of our today's meeting. So let me include. Okay, where did you take your bachelor degree? I see. I'm gonna. Where did you take your bachelor's degree? So I I did my bachelor's um, at Norwich University in um, Vermont uh, in the U.S. And then uh, afterwards, I I did my master's at Syracuse University in in New York. Um, and then I moved on to my PhD. So uh, afterwards, I worked at a number of schools in the U.S. Uh, Embry Riddle being my latest one. Uh, I went up to associate a tenured associate professor there, and then I decided to uh, come to Kazakhstan. Please, for master's in electrical engineering, are we to contact a faculty member before we can be considered for admission? Uh, no, uh, you don't have to. However, it is always better to, to do that because then uh, faculty members can vouch for you. Uh, so, for example, if um, you, know, you, you contact a faculty member, you show them the interest, in, in, in their field, uh, they can always say, well, you know, um, I really liked him, you know, during, during the discussion, 
and we can put them into a certain research group or something like that. So uh, no, it's not a requirement. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's always better to, to uh, reach out to faculty that have uh, aligned research interests and then uh, strike up a kind of conversation so that they know who you are, they know your face possibly, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, thank you. I think we can move to for the next presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, if you have any questions, yeah. um, feel free to email me. Um, I'll I'll send out the presentation to the admissions office, and they can I guess pass it down to you. So good luck. Okay. Today's next speaker is. Oh, sorry, questions. I actually contacted Pro, but I didn't get the feedback. So dear Coyote, uh, usually our professors always give the feedback or respond to emails. Maybe you had some questions regarding that mission and, uh, and uh, an email was forwarded to them. Would you please write us uh, who you contacted? What kind of questions did, did you have? Uh, I'll write your email of our school. So um, I, I will answer this uh, question from Ilnur. Um, please, can you inform us about the differences um, between computer science and computer engineering? So um, computer science is very theoretical. Um, so there's a lot of um, discussion of algorithms and how to make them more efficient. Uh, there's a lot of software development and programming, whereas computer engineering kind of straddles um, the area between electrical engineering, which is very, very, um, I guess, practical, and uh, coding. So if you're interested in both, uh, then obviously I pick computer engineering because there you'll code, uh, you'll, you'll learn how to interface with the hardware and stuff like that. Um, so in terms of employability, uh, that's actually, well, it depends on what you wanna do. Uh, so if you like software development, obviously computer science is the way to go, but if you want to, uh, work in a very hands-on environment, you want to play around with new technology, then computer engineering is, is the way to go. Uh, are these collaborations available for undergrads? Uh, yes, um, obviously. So, you know, if you're interested, you can contact a faculty member and, um, you know, tell them, I, I know nothing, but I'm interested. And uh, even, even if you know nothing, but you're willing to work, then, um, They'll, they'll take you on. So typically faculty are looking for very motivated students and we realize that you have uh, limited experience possibly. Um, so if you're willing to uh, work on your on your skills and if you're willing to you know be very, very interested in the topic and uh, then then we'll take you on as a research uh, assistant or just a, as a researcher. Your Coyote, you can, uh, I think that this question you can address to Professor Mikitari regarding the masters. Uh, let us move to the presentation and then we'll continue this Q&A session. Thank you very much, Professor. Mm -hmm. uh, the next speaker is Professor Nitina Giri. Hello. Hello, good evening, everyone. I really hope that you are doing well. Everyone is healthy all over the world. I can see names from different parts of the world. So I'm really happy actually to have a, you know, dif different candidate actually for electrical and computer engineering department at Nazarbayev University. Uh, before getting you started, I got to appreciate Professor Ahan for uh, his nice presentation. Um, so about the bachelor degree um, at electrical and computer engineering department, uh, School of Engineering and Digital Sciences, Nazarbayev University. And I'm going to appreciate our colleagues, Laura Mara, Alia, so, and all of the colleagues at the school, so for arrangement of this specific session. Um, okay, if you can give me um, co-host, then probably I can share the presentation. Um, I share if it it's now. possible. It's Is right. it? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, appreciate. It. Thank you very much. I hope you can see my screen. Is it yes, we can visible? See it. Okay, okay. So um, for those people which they join at the beginning, I'm pretty sure that Professor Ahan um, he has explained actually uh, uh, you know uh, about a little bit on uh, 
uh, a new campus, uh, but I want to just to repeat a couple of things, uh, a little bit introduction, because I believe that some of the some of the audience they join us a little bit late, and they focus mainly on the master and PhD program. Um, Nazarbayev University, um, it's a kind of research-based university which is located in Eurasia, um, and it's in Nur Sultan city in Kazakhstan. I can say that um, so after after more than 10 years actually establishment of this university, Nazarbayev University is quite famous university um, in the West, in the East. Uh, uh, so basically, and more or less, we have got lots of collaborators all over the world. And we have got very active faculty members which they work on different research projects. So for, for actually, you know, uh, different disciplines in all over the world. Um, we have got right now uh, one main campus at Nur Sultan. City, uh, which more or less those people which um, they are uh, from Astana, New Sultan City, um, so an Astana region. Um, so they have seen probably actually um, Nazarbayev University campus at least from outside. But uh, this is the main entrance of Nazarbayev University, which has got very very nice architecture design, and um, you know so that that that's really unique. So this is actually the other entrance, main entrance of Nazarbayev University, which is really significant actually. And I can tell you that I visited many universities in the world, but uh, I can say that these entrances is, um, are really, you know, um, you know, huge and significant with very nice, uh, you know, architecture. So, um, um, and, and it's constructed with very fantastic actually, you know, materials. This is our main um, uh, hall. So which usually different, um, you know, um, well, uh, schools uh, can be connected together. For example, each and every school which you can find here, you can see different, different actually buildings here. So for example, this one, this one, this one, these are different blocks, which they can be connected um, uh, through the atrium. We call it atrium. That's it. That's a big hall with nice, actually, you know, trees. And uh, usually between classes, people enjoying actually walking around and they are connecting actually from this point, they are connected actually to the library, to uh, to different schools, and it's it's very very fantastic environment. And even during uh, the winter time, uh, with temp which the temperature goes down here, I can tell you that it's quite actually um, not hot, but it has it has actually you know uh, a proper temperature. You can simply sit and you study uh, whatever you want. Apart from this, of course, Nazarbayev University has got lots of, um, you know, facilities. But one of those interesting and fantastic facilities is the sports center of Nazarbayev University, uh, which we have got very significant swimming pool that's that's even um, possible to have international, actually, you know, competitions here. So it is completely in the level of international, uh, you know, uh, match. And um, so we have actually, you know, different, different courts uh, to be available for different sports. So this is just, a fast introduction, a little bit about the campus for those people specifically which they're gonna apply for us from, from uh, overseas. Looking to the program, um, you know, um, or programs in a School of Engineering and Digital Sciences, I can say that we have uh, engineering, we have um, science actually, uh, in terms of actually bachelor degree, undergrad level, uh, and we have master program, and of course we have doctoral program. Um, specifically focusing on electrical engineering, electrical and computer engineering, which I highlighted here. Uh, for bachelor degree, uh, as Professor Ahan mentioned, we provide actually electrical and computer engineering discipline. And then your certificate, when you certify from here, your certificate uh, from NU would be based on electrical and computer engineering. Uh, however, in master will follow actually the same scenario. So, and uh, we would have electrical and computer engineering discipline again. Uh, but then we move actually to the doctoral program. We just support actually electrical. What is different on computer engineering uh, and electrical engineering? It's mainly actually the type of the research which you're going to do. And of course, different courses which you're going to pass to graduate actually in bachelor or master degree. They are a little bit different with the doctoral program. So in doctoral program, uh, we, we actually preferred uh, based on the availability of the faculty members. So we have preferred to have electrical engineering rather than electrical and computer engineering, but electrical and computer engineering are available until uh, the master uh, you know, level. Uh, specifically, I wanted to talk about the master program. And then I wanna, uh, in the meantime, I'll try in between to talk about the PhD program because they are, more or less from the scenario, they are similar, but number of the credits and this sort of thing might be different. 
Moving forward, um, again, I'm in, in introduction section. I'm, I'm reviewing actually whatever uh, uh, Professor Ahan probably highlighted. Uh, for, for, for BSc program, um, so, um, um, well, we have, we have four disciplines. Uh, we have uh, device and circuit, we have power engineering, control system and energy, signal processing and communication system, and then we have computer engineering. And in each and every discipline, which is highlighted here, we have number of faculty members. Therefore, you have opportunity to work with whoever you want and whoever is more close actually, you know, to your uh, interest and to your field. Uh, that, that's a case which you, you are completely free to go for that. Uh, but for each and every discipline, uh, we have uh, different labs. So at electrical and computer engineering department, we have got number of labs. So um, we, have, we have very fantastic labs uh, as compared to the international actually universities available in all over the world. So you can find actually the equipment in some of these photos here. Uh, we have electrical and electronic circuit laboratory, semiconductor characterization laboratory, telecommunication lab, radio frequency device lab, electric machine lab, power system lab, power electronic lab, computer laboratory, high voltage engineering lab, renewable energy lab, photonics and optics laboratory. We have, we have some colleagues at, at, at EC department to support actually photonics and optics for those people which their discipline is between electrical engineering and, and, and physics a little bit, uh, specifically focused on optical fibers and, and, and optics. And we have robotics and intelligence system laboratories. So, and all these laboratories are, are equipped with very fantastic and uh, you know new equipment. So all all actually you know equipment which we have in these laboratories they are in international actually you know discipline level. Uh, this is still about the bachelor program, which I believe Professor uh, Ahan talked about it very very widely. We have different projects in bachelor. So and I believe that whoever is in bachelor, um, because it was a question, he would be able to work um, you know and to cooperate with different universities as our faculty members. Uh, they are very active. But moving forward then to talk specifically on master and PhD program. Well, um, we have master program in electrical and computer engineering and PhD program in electrical and in electrical engineering. Uh, for master program, the process is in this form. So by the way, I'll answer all of your questions, but I know many of you, uh, you have question about how you're gonna apply for a master. Do you need actually to contact your supervisor? professor or something like as this uh, before actually application or not. First of all, uh, let me tell you that um, application for PhD and masters, uh, they are pretty similar. Um, I mean, the procedure, you have to go to the website of the university, you will find the application form, you have to complete the application form, including the entire requirement and document, and then you need to submit uh, two reference letter, at least in the system, uh, or maybe you need to provide the name and system automatically will send a kind of link for that professor and that professor is able actually to fill up the form um, uh, for, for recommendation later for you. And then when the application form completed, so it goes to the next stage, which you cannot see that stage. That stage is something between application and interview stage. By the way, I just, uh, you know, make it short here. So after you submit your application, let's say end of February, for example, or beginning of the February, there's a deadline for that. You can look at the university website. Um, from from, from the, the day which the application are closed, application submission are closed, until the day which um, you will get the interview, hopefully, because I'll explain, maybe you will not get interview, it depends. We will process the entire actually document which is submitted to the system. Admission department in, in U level send the entire information to the school level and the school will dispatch between the department and it will reach to the, to the hand of the admission committee. This is usually a common procedure for the entire the university in the world. Uh, when we receive application, uh, we will proceed, um, you know, um, the first actually, you know, a step over the entire application. And that one is, we are filtering, we have some criteria in terms of actually, um, you know, your background. So this includes the university which you graduated. This includes actually, for example, your um, CGPA. I mean, the total GPA, which you got actually at the end of the bachelor, whether you have got any, you know, previous research experience, whether do you have uh, any kind of actually, you know, um, um, work experience, 
have you been involved in any, in any kind of, you know, basically society? So the entire the activities, including the parameters in your CVs, uh, which, um, you know, they are standard activity um, expected from a bachelor student, which is going to go for the master's student, they could be evaluated and will complete the form. When the form completed, we will go actually to put a filter because, of course, we don't have, um, you know, enough capacity to admit the entire the applicant. For example, last year, we have got, I think, um, I don't know, I, I remember that we have got something approximately 60 or 70 applicants, but we have a number of seats available. We will, um, you know, filter um, some of those based on actually the, we will rank everything and based on the mark and the scores which they have taken, we will filter some sort of a student. Let's say, for example, 60%, these are just examples, 60% will go actually to the next stage and 40% would be automatically filters and they would be recommended actually to apply next year when they improve actually, you know, their CV. Um, maybe they cannot improve CGPA, but they can improve the other skills, which I've mentioned for you. Then those 60% or 70%, it depends year by year uh, is different. That 60% or 70%, um, they will, would be invited actually for interview. During the interview, we have panel members. Uh, that's, a, that's a master actually, you know, program panel members. And you, will, you would have 10 minutes actually, you know, uh, to answer to the question of the panel member. Usually we have three or four panel members and it's very friendly discussion. So it's not something stressful because some, some people ask me actually whether this is a stressful thing. So I said, no, this is just something, some, some simple discussion which you, you have to be yourself actually and just answer to the question based on your experience and, and your knowledge from, from the bachelor. So of course, during the interview, um, we will recognize that some of the, I mean the panel, everything will go from the panel. Uh, the panel will complete the evaluation forms and they'll submit the evaluation forms and the system automatically sort the entire the scores which they have taken and some of the people, some of the candidates, they would be filtered here. And then finally, some of the, some of the candidates, they will go actually to the last distance and they'll get, they'll get offered. By the way, um, we are very optimistic about this process. Um, so we try to be as much as possible supportive uh, over the last years. Um, I'm talking about the last six years. Um, to support the entire student from, from the entire actually countries. We have some local actually, you know, um, scholarships and we have some categories uh, for, for, for international scholarships. So each and every year we have some, some seeds, uh, you know, with the scholarship. Anyway, when you got offered, you will enter to the program uh, usually in August of that year, which you submitted your application. For example, if you've been now, so you it will become clear that whether you admit it or not by June. Usually, this is the case by 14 of June, 13 of June, or maybe earlier, first of June. Um, I'm sorry, July. I said June. Sorry, July. So first of July, it will become clear more or less, um, you know, um, you know whether you admit it or not. Um, for international students, it's going to be a little bit earlier, specifically and hopefully this year, because they need to apply for a visa and. Uh, for local applicants, so it might be actually a little bit later, so maybe maybe mid of July. Anyway, uh, when you admit it, then you will enter to a kind of two-year program uh, with a research thesis. Therefore, uh, you would you would have a kind of research thesis. I'll explain about this research thesis. Do you have similar scenario? And and one more thing, um, num number of the you know ECTS, number of credits based on the European system, which you need actually to pass to be able to graduate is 120. Um, you know, ECTS for the master program. So that's a two year program. We have similar scenario and similar steps uh, for PhD program. However, PhD program, for PhD program, you need to pass 240 credits to be able for graduation. I'll, I'll talk about detail of this program a little bit in a couple of slides later. Some people um, ask question, do we have um, a kind of, you know, um, um, undergrad actually to PhD program directly uh, from, from a bachelor degree you admit um, you know, to, to PhD, PhD level and to, to the PhD program. Uh, I should say that at Nazarbayev University, we don't have that one. I know that some of, some of the uni US universities, um, you know, they, um, they have this system which they can proceed from BSc actually directly to the PhD. But uh, at Nazarbayev University, we have actually, you know, master program which should be taken and it should be, um, you know, basically credited for, for a student to be able to go for PhD. Talking about the master and PhD courses. So when you enter to the, to the master program, 
Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about master, then I'll talk about PhD. When you enter into the master program, you will, um, at the first semester, you will get five core courses. Um, and you need to pass these five courses. It's not elective. I mean, when you enter to the program, you automatically at the first semester, you will get, or you will see actually these five courses. And then you need to pass those five courses. I'll explain about these, these courses. What are these courses? And then when you finish actually the first semester for the second semester, so you would have two, actually two or three core courses. And then you have two elective courses, which can be actually you know, aligned uh, based on your master thesis, the thesis which you're going to select and the thesis which you're going to conduct actually you know, um, in, in, in your master actually program. And then you have a chance to select different kind of electives. So these electives are distributed between the entire the disciplines and entire the measures. Uh, those four measures which are tied for you. So from, from actually electronic and devices, um, signal systems, signal processing and all of these things, including machine learning and artificial intelligence, power engineering, control system and, and energy section and computer engineering. And, and of course, photonics. Um, based on your project, which you're gonna to select or you're gonna to conduct during your master level, you would be able actually to select the elective course. One more thing which I need to highlight here, each and every single student which is entered to Nazarbayev University has a kind of advisor. That advisor, which is a faculty member, is your specific advisor and he would be able to advise you based on your project, you can contact him. And he would be able to advise you that, uh, okay, which course is more um, you know, suitable actually for your future in this thesis and then you can select. Therefore, you have a little bit of support here, however, if you're going to select it, um, you make a decision yourself and you're going to select it, maybe you're interested in one of these topics. But the these are just a number of those electives. We have, we, have, we have many electives based on each and every semester faculty availability. Uh, we, we are sharing actually elective courses. And you can find a list of electives in our handbook, EC department handbook as well. And then you will go for the electives. Second semester, um, you will get a couple of electives. And then third semester, you have a chance to get a still one elective. And in fourth semester, you have a chance to get another elective. Therefore, uh, you have a chance to get four electives at least, at least uh, during the course of actually, you know, study during the master program. I'll, I'll, I'll show you actually the chart in the next slide. However, for the PhD, the scenario is a little bit different. The scenario is in PhD, um, of course, for the first semester, you're supposed to take some of these core courses, uh, but you are supposed to pass uh, some of these important courses, which mainly they are supported for your PhD. For example, research method and ethics, thesis research, current research literature. So, uh, and then you have this chance, even sometimes along with some of these core courses, you have this chance to select some of the elective courses. So some of these elective courses for a PhD program, um, 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 I mean, uh, you need to complete a minimum five courses in, in the first year of your PhD program. Some of these actually, you know, uh, courses can be taken uh, from, from the electives, uh, which we provided actually for a master program. I mean, we look at to the undergraduate as an undergraduate student or undergraduate actually program. We look at to the postgraduate, including master and and PhD as a kind of postgraduate you know, program. Therefore, uh, these are pretty close together. However, the PhD thesis is much more significant rather than the master thesis which you're going to select. Uh, but more or less, um, they, are, they are actually able um, to select different courses from, from uh, whatever is available, so as a kind of elective. If we look at the chart, um, um, specifically about the master uh, you know, program at EC department, I can say that, for example, telecommunication, a technical, sorry, technical communication, uh, is a kind of core course, advanced applied mathematics, advanced data structure and algorithm, system modeling and control and probability and statistic. These are the core courses which you are supposed to more or less pass at the first semester. And then second semester, by the way, before I'm moving to the second semester, let me tell you something. You see here, we try to select the courses in a way which uh, they are um, supported for more or less entire disciplines. Uh, for example, if somebody gonna to go for, for circuit design, if somebody gonna to go for actually, you know, 
uh, computer architecture, is somebody going to go for the power, somebody to go actually for machine learning, signal processing. We try to provide mainly fundamental courses, which they are actually supportive for the entire the disciplines, because we believe that from the next semester, which is the second semester here, you would be able to go for your own electives. So when you move from first semester to second semester, you will get research method and ethics. Again, this is something similar to the, to the PhD, but the lecture is different and the syllabus would be different. But I'm saying that the topic is more or less similar. You will get research seminar course and then you will get embedded system and application. And along with this, you, you are able to get two electives. You see, each course has six, uh, you know, ECTS, uh, you know, or six credits. Um, and then in total, so here you will get five times to the six, 30, and then 30, so it's becoming 60. Then you move to the third semester. Here is the, is the point which you need to take master thesis one, and that one is 24 credits. Along with the master thesis one, you would be able to get six credit elective course, again, based on your choice. And this would be similar scenario, actually, in the fourth semester. Um, I'll tell you when you need to select the thesis and defense the proposal in the next slide. So um, the requirement for graduation in, in master program or even in PhD program is of course a satisfactory application uh, to the program and completing actually the entire uh, coursework. So you're supposed to complete all the required coursework in the program. And then you have to have a satisfactory and completion, satisfactory mark and completion for a master thesis, master thesis one and master thesis two, both of them together. And more important, you need to have minimum CGPA of 2.6 uh, or 2.67 to be able actually to graduate in the program. If your CGPA uh, after the fourth semester is less than 2.67, so then unfortunately, unfortunately, it will go actually you know, to the committee and the committee will, will make a decision so that uh, what you have to do. But generally, according to the handbook, if somebody cannot or is on, uh, if somebody is unable actually to take this uh, CGPA, uh, he would be automatically um, you know, dismissed and um, he cannot actually graduate or she cannot graduate. Um, but it depends. So uh, I don't wanna say that this is actually you know, um, um, you know, white and black, uh, but this is regulation. I mean, maybe the committee will make decision that it should be dismissed exactly according to the regulation. But um, during the corona time, the committee decided something else to be more supportive actually for the student. But this 2.67 is actually something which is very critical and you have to take care of, uh, you know, basically that. Uh, in terms of um, active research durations, uh, we have almost the entire disciplines Almost, I'm not saying that we have all of them, but I'm saying that we have almost the entire disciplines available for electrical and computer engineering. So um, these disciplines include actually electronic device and circuit as we just got together. We have got fa faculty members and we have got colleagues which they are working on RF and uh, millimeter wave circuit components for 5G. We have colleagues for, to work on antenna, uh, RFID, new generation of solar cells, wireless power transfer in terms of the electronic systems and optoelectronics. These are some of those projects. By the way, projects, they would be changed. I mean, these topics would be changed based on the grant and based on the fund and based on the priority in the research area. So later in, in the time when you, you join to the university. So we have signal processing and communication. So in terms of signal processing and machine learning, uh, you know, acoustics, and some, some of these topics are more or less similar uh, to what uh, Professor Akhan discussed. In the meantime, uh, we, have, we have actually very wide research area in terms of actually power engineering control system and energy, uh, talking about wireless charging of electric vehicles, uh, smart city and energy management, uh, you know, cloud-based monitoring system, energy block change. So basically wireless charging for the drones, UAVs, electric vehicles. And then uh, we, have, we have a very fantastic project in computer engineering as well. So like as IoT machine learning application, future power grid, um, real time evaluation. So for, for actually for high voltage insulator, but using the computer skills from image processing point of view, rather than actually, you know, from, from control system point of view. Machine learning for high performance computing application and wireless system, deep learning based design. You see, we have different projects, which each and every project is discussable with, with its own faculty member. When you're going to select 
uh, your your master thesis. So therefore, we are um, we have tried actually, you know, to cover different disciplines. So um, to be able to support the entire student, which they're going to join us from different part of the world, because I, I know that many of you will come with different background and many of you, you have different interests. So that's why here we try actually to, to cover as much as possible uh, different disciplines. Okay, um, let's talk about uh, thesis selection. We talk about the topics. Topics can be discussed later as Professor Ahan highlighted. You're supposed to contact to the potential supervisor for master or, or PhD. And then, um, you know, you agree uh, on a specific topic. Uh, and then you, you go forward actually, you know, to conduct that research. That's something that you need to select it during master and PhD program, both of them. But when you need to proceed this, I mean, you need to, when you need to select this. So I said that in, in master program, after the first semester, which is more or less compulsory, you know, so you have to pass these courses, there is no more option. So uh, during the second semester, from the beginning of the second semester, you are supposed to start negotiation with different professors, look at the website of university, look at their interests and their recent publications, their research area and communicate with them. So here we have got very, very super good relation between our professors and, and students. Uh, very, very, and whenever you email them, so they will answer you, uh, you know, basically, uh, and, and they are happy actually to have a meeting with you to explain you about, uh, about uh, the project, to explain, to discuss with you, listen to your interest, uh, listen to your background. So this is the semester, semester two or second semester is the semester which you need to discuss with the professor, potential supervisor. We call it potential supervisor. And uh, you need to complete actually master thesis agreement form signed between you, your supervisor and your co-supervisor. So therefore, by the second semester, your project will become clear, more or less. And in, in, it's clear that uh, in which topic you're going to work. When the second semester finish, so it is almost April, yes, end of April or May. Then your thesis topic is selected. And then you will go for summertime, start working actually, you know, over your thesis to prepare the proposal. Then you come back to the university, actually, you know, uh, in August. I mean, you are second year right now. Then you are supposed to defend your proposal. Well, it's, it's not a hard task to do. Uh, you will explain. So it's, it's a simple, actually, in a presentation. In 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you will explain what you're going to do in this project. And then there are two panel members that are asking that, okay, so have you considered this one? Are you going to do this one? Have you considered that one? You're going to do this one? Is this innovative? Is that innovative? They'll give you recommendation to improve your proposal. But if you didn't work actually over your proposal, of course, and unfortunately, I mean, during the summertime, to prepare it for the beginning of the third semester, of course, in that case, you would be in trouble. Therefore, you have a few months here, three, four months to work over the proposal. That's enough time. So that, that's more than enough um, uh, to work over the proposal. So when you defend the proposal at the beginning of the third semester, then you have two semesters. This is the place or this is the time which you already selected master thesis one and master thesis two. If you remember, I, say, I told you that each master thesis is 24 credits. Um, then semester three and semester four, you will focus significantly over your project. And then at the end of the project, you will have a defense with the panel members. Um, question. Some people ask me that, um, is it possible that we start actually our, um, you know, um, more or less research study from the first semester? The answer is yes. Why not? Sooner is better. So you can start, uh, if you know, if you communicated with the kind of potential supervisor, you can actually, you know, start from first semester uh, to go ahead with that, that supervisor. And then just officially, you can, you can actually sign agreement with the, with the supervisor on the second semester. Um, but, if you are not that much familiar with our professors, so we'll give you actually, you know, first semester to get familiar with the entire colleagues. And then you can, and, and the atmosphere environment, because I know that some of you, you will come from, from overseas, some of you from the other local universities, it will take time a little bit to get familiar with the environment. That's why we put it on the second semester uh, for, for actually supervisors. In terms of PhD, the scenario is a little bit different. First of all, you can communicate actually, you know, with the, you know, uh, potential supervisor from the first semester, from the beginning completely. 
because that's a PhD program that the project is larger than the master program. So the project is supposed to go for three, four years rather than one year, single year, actually study a uh, master thesis study for, for, for master's degree. So um, from the beginning, you can communicate with potential supervisor, but this is not uh, officially important until the end of third semester, I'll let you know. First semester and second semester, you are supposed uh, to pass some courses, if you remember that. Based on those courses which you will pass during the first year, at the end of first year, you have something which we call it SQE, that is subject exam. And you are able to select out of those five courses, for example, or, or number of courses which you have passed during the last year, you have this chance to select, for example, three courses for this exam. And over this exam, from each course, you will get two questions, just only two questions, and you need to answer these questions. If you are able to pass subject qualification exam, which is simple, so it's a, it's, it's a kind of exam, but you know it's not that much something let's say that, oh, again, exam during the PhD. No, it's not very, it's not very hard. It's, it's quite simple. If you pass these courses, I believe that you can simply actually pass the SQE exam. When you pass SQE, then you will go for the third semester, and then you have a chance to prepare actually your PhD proposal, which we call it the research qualification, qualification actually exam, and then you go for proposal defense. You see, we have had a proposal defense here. So this proposal defense, we call it RQE, and it would be actually at after the third semester of, of, of the PhD student. The PhD student has taught, that's enough time to work over the thesis to reach to the defense, which is uh, end of actually program. So what is the expectation from a PhD student? Um, um, the expectation is of course to have proper Q1 journal publications, high rank journal publications. Um, if you look at to the, uh, to the handbook of um, 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 SEDS, School of Engineering and Digital Sciences, um, well, it is a requirement that you have at least one publication um, one publication or two publications. I think right now the regulation is one Q1 publication to be able to go for, uh, to prepare yourself for the thesis based on the agreement between you and your supervisor. It's similar scenario here, but here we don't have actually, you know, um, requirement for the publication. I believe many of our students, they have publication at the end, but you know, some of them, they may graduate without publication. It's not compulsory, but here, so we have minimum requirement for, for, for the PhD because that's quite significant. Uh, as Professor Akhan said, um, we have um, different colleagues all over the world. And uh, of course, uh, we have, I want to I wanna say uh, that we have a number of graduates in all over the world. Our graduates right now, uh, they are in US, in Europe, in Australia. Well, um, I've, I've had a flight actually, you know, a couple of years before. I've seen a couple of my students in Dubai airport. When I asked them, what are you doing here? They said that they are working in a company. Uh, it was a European company which they have had a project in Dubai. I mean, uh, our graduates, so basically right now, um, um, you know, basically they are, they are very, very active in different parts of the world. And um, I can say that at Nazarbayev University, you would be able to communicate with the entire the world because our faculty members, they have a large network so they can actually, you know, collaborate with, with different universities and they are collaborating with different universities. And based on this collaboration, you would be automatically involved uh, of course, more or less, uh, hopefully, in, in actual different discipline in all of them. This is similar slide, which uh, Professor Ahan, um, you know, basically uh, presented. We have collaboration with different companies. Uh, for example, with Allagium Electric, we have had project. I mean, so uh, all the projects are practical projects. So, and, uh, you know, uh, with, with Kegok, which it's, it's a transmission company in Kazakhstan, for those people which they don't know that. Uh, we have had always discussion and project. Um, you know, some of some of the some of the oil and gas company, Schlumbergers, Alstom, which Professor Ahan highlighted, ABB, SAP, those people which they are in computer engineering, they know SAP. We have had in 2019 and 2020, we have done a big project for SAP from here. SAP um, um, headquarters is in Europe, but we have done a project from here actually for the SAP and our system and our program right now is working in European countries. Uh, and we have very good relation actually and very collaboration, uh, significant collaboration with the industry. EC department is very, very active department. I'm not sure to say this, but I think it's the most active department in terms of collaboration with the industry, which we have really finished actually, you know, 
uh, mini project with the industry. And these industries mainly hire, um, you know, our students. So uh, for, for example, Tingis Chevrolet is a kind of oil company. People, some of the people, they are familiar with that. So many of our graduates, so um, uh, they, are, they are working with very fantastic, with very fantastic salary. So in, um, you know, basically that company. Okay, um, thank you very much. This is the end of my presentation. I believe that I'll see you all of the people here um, very soon. So at, um, uh, you know, uh, electrical and computer engineering department. If you got any question, I'm happy to, to answer to the question. If you need, I get back to the PowerPoint. I would be happy to get back to the PowerPoint. Thank you, Professor. I have a suggestion. Maybe we could have a quick Q and A session, or sorry, quiz, and then move to Q and A. To sure, sure. In the meantime, I will look at actually to these questions to see how we can answer the questions. We have some questions in chat box, so we can move to quiz. Or chat. Uh, uh, do you need something from my side, or you will you will handle? Uh, I will I will handle it. So yeah, zero yeah. participants. We have time for a quiz. I will share the slides. I will show you the questions. Uh, and uh, I'd like to ask you to type uh, the answers in the chat box and write it in one message. So, for example, 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D, 5C, for example. So, in a one message to find out, to find out who is the first and uh, to choose three winners. Okay, let us start. I will give you, like, so I think five minutes will be enough. And then we can move to the Q&A sessions. I can see that uh, we have some questions in the chat box. And we'll move with them. Uh, OK. Can you see my screen? OK, here it is. Already you have the question. Yes, here. So you can put it like this, but with letters, of course. So here is the first question. How many core courses are required to be passed at the first semester in the master program? So A, five courses, B, three courses, C, eight courses, and D, two courses. So it's about the core courses, not about the elective ones. Okay, let's move to the next question. So the second question, how many units of credits should be passed successfully for master and PhD graduations, graduation respectively? So here you have the numbers. <coughs> Sorry, put the right answer. Uh, dear Jens, I'd like to ask you to put all your answers in a one message, so it would be easier for us to find out who is the first and who gave all the answers first. It's easier to check. So, this is the second question. Let's move to the third one. Okay. How many ACTS credits must be successfully passed before graduation? It's about the undergraduate program. Two hundred fifty, one hundred eighty, two hundred forty, two hundred forty-eight. Now this question is for undergraduate program. Yes, for for the bachelor program. Okay. The 
first question is about the PPE. What is the minimum that must be maintained to consider in a good standing? So it's applicable for the undergraduate program. A 2.0, B 2.5, C 3.0, and D 2.2. Uh, dear Mursalim, I'd like to ask you to put all the answers in one message. Because it's really hard to find out which question you are meaning and who is the first. And we have the last question, the first one. So what is the minimum passing grade in technical core courses? Is it for undergraduate level? So A, C plus, B, C minus, C, B minus, and D, B. So I think uh, it's easier to read rather than Okay, we can see the first one to answer. This is Kulakhmet of the Gopar. Thank you. If you need, ah, okay, so it was Yarasil Aishan. I'm sorry, I just opened the chat box. Okay. If you need to return to one of the previous questions, please let me know. I'll give you like a couple of minutes. For one minute, I think it's enough because I can see a lot of all the participants already answered. And then we can go to the wording part, checking the answers and the wording. Just a second, we can make a little table to find out. Yes. Dear Ursaline, could you please send your message to all of our participants? Because you send it directly to me, I think it will be fair if you send it to everyone. Okay. These are the so we will stop here and move to the right answers, to the slide with the right answers. Mm -hmm. So the first one answer is A. So why Jean was right. Uh, was right, Simpson, Ursuline, Genis. The second one is how many units of credit should be passed? So it's C. The right answer is C. Everyone will be right. 
for the second one. Uh, the third question, the answer is D. So I run again. Jean and Mursaline. Mursaline, you should send your answers on that to everyone. Like it film is going to show that you're right. Uh, and the fourth one is F. So I'm not sure that it should be F or Alia. Which variant it was? Could you please help? And the fifth one is B. So it's Yurasso, Jufnet, Salim, the fourth. Uh, so it's 2.0, the fourth one. 2.0, it's B. And the correct answer. So if I if I'm right, it was Aijan has three right answers, there are all two. At the copper three, Samsung two, Marcelin three, Janice two. Okay. So the right answer, so it should be A, C, D, A, D. Mm -hmm. The first question is a yes. Uh, the graph R, A, C, D, A, B. Yes, you have four. The graph R has four right answers. And four A. So, uh, uh, Abdu, uh, I'm curious to see who is the winner. <laughs> it's uh, it takes uh, some time to calculate to check it well, out again. Uh, okay, until you calculate, I'm going to answer a couple of the questions. Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you. I see. Um, that's fine. Yerasil, um, uh, Yerasil, let me first uh, answer to uh, a general question uh, from our international, actually, you know, friends. Uh, I've seen a couple of questions, um, you know, from from some candidate from the other the other, um, you know. Uh, countries like as India, Nigeria, and the other countries? Um, the answer is yes. Um, whoever apply actually, you know, uh, for master program, so it will go actually for the committee and there is a possibility to be admitted at Nazapayev University. We have no limitation all over the world to accept the students. Um, uh, all it's a procedure. In terms of number of scholarship, I've seen one, one person ask a question about number of scholarship. I should say that number of scholarship depends, uh, depends to the budget of the university each and every year. And that's similar scenario in all over the world. For example, in, let's say, for example, in Australia, um, sometimes the university has 10 full scholarships, sometimes university based on the budget, they have 20. But typically, typically few actually, you know, international scholarships always are available for international candidate in, in, in the level of the PhD and few. Um, you know, uh, basically for master level. But um, if I'm gonna answer a little bit more precisely, I can say that the chance is high, uh, you know, uh, to be able to grab that scholarship. Therefore, we don't have any kind of limitation. There was a question to talk about, um, a question was asking about uh, how many, how many, I think how many students or how many graduates from master goes to PhD, something like this. I should say that it depends to the motivation of a student. So after graduation, we have many applicants uh, from master, you know, um, 
graduate people to go for, for PhD. I mean, they will apply. And based on, again, we have similar scenario which we discussed together. Everything is fair, everything is automatic. Um, I mean, um, those a scoring system is automatic. I mean, it's a, I mean, each and every um, you know panel member, uh, he or she will give his own score or her own score, and then it would be submitted actually to the system. A system will rank everything. So therefore, this chance is available for for the entire the people whoever is interested uh, to join us, uh, and it doesn't have even um, you know. Um, age limitation however of course uh, always younger uh, people um, because you know uh, maybe they have more free time to focus over actually you know research for um, they have maybe maybe made their chance but there is no age limitation we have had a uh, you know um, a phd candidate he joined us a phd student he joined us from industry i think he's continue and he was a senior actually you know manager in industry before he joined us um, I think I answered the questions related to this case. There, there are a couple of questions about the bachelor, which I'm going to leave it to Professor Akhan or to Lonara actually to answer that. Uh, about GPA and CGPA in a course. Uh, guys, um, thank you for, for this question, uh, but uh, course doesn't have actually GPA or CGPA. Course, for the course, you will get a mark. And based on number of the marks, which you will get over one semester for different courses, your GPA actually would be calculated. And then CGPA would be actually uh, the, the, the total GPA, which you will meet at the end of actually your study. So for example, after fourth year, or, or this CGPA can be, can be cumulative value of the entire GPA after third semester or after second semester. I mean, that's a cumulative part. Um, therefore course, has um, a score or mark. And this mark is based on A, B, C, D. A is, um, let's say between 95 and 100. You know, there is a, there is a score system. So uh, uh, alphabetic score system. And uh, GPA is between zero and four. I don't know. So this was the question. So therefore um, you cannot compare uh, right. one course. Uh, you know, in course, maybe you will get C in one of those courses. Uh, of course, it will actually, um, you know, uh, it will um, cause that your GPA goes down, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you fail in that course. You may pass the course, but your GPA is low. I mean, it has nothing to one single courses. Of course, higher marks and higher scores in, in different courses will increase your GPA. And one more thing which I forgot to tell you, if your um, CGPA goes less than 2.6, then you will go on probation. Your scholarship would be suspended. Uh, that's a case which you have to take um, care about that, and your GPA should always remain more than 2.67. Uh, these are more or less questions. Is there any kind of what, what advice you can give to the young people who want to enter this electrical engineering, for example? Well, I can. Oh, uh, that, that's a very good question. Look, somebody asked, what are the criteria to enter to the program? You see, when we go for evaluation, uh, we will look at actually to the entire the applicant and we we'll look at to each, each application individually and we will read actually the recommendation later, one by one. I can say that one by one. Um, of course, your previous background, it has significant influence. Uh, for example, um, number of, you see, master, program is a kind of research oriented program because more or less you will pass some courses during the first year but at the end of the day you have to have a kind of good good actually or proper thesis and thesis material at the end therefore you should be able to conduct a kind of research program. those people which they have worked a little bit during um, you know their bachelor time or research project of course, they are feeling more relaxed when you, they enter to the program. However, if somebody never worked on a research you know, uh, topic, of course, it would be new for him. It will, tie, it will take a time, sorry. It will take a time that he's getting familiar or she's getting familiar. Uh, therefore, you know, having a little bit of research background, I understand that during the bachelor, many of you, you never had chance actually to be involved in, research, in a research work. But um, I can advise this one, try to be uh, in a research work as much as possible. Of course, CGPA, 
total actually GPA that has a direct influence. Uh, your previous relevant activity to the field. For example, we have a candidate, he has been written that I was a general sale manager actually, you know, somewhere. Of course, to be sale manager or to be general director of a company, that's that's not actually something, uh, you know, significant actually, if you're gonna to, to, to perform something in electrical engineering, unless your activity was in the field. I mean, it's related something actually, you know, uh, to, the, to the electrical engineering. For example, so if you're going to go for computer, so if you have programming skill, if you have been involved in different kind of activities, if you're going to, to power and control automation, if you have been in industry as an engineer, you have experience, um, um, you know, of course, these sorts of things. I mean, my advice uh, before entering to the program is try to make your CV as strong as possible because it's a little bit comp com competitive. So um, not here in all of the world. So if you're going to go for master program, you should have a comp competitive CV. Um, well, uh, how big competition is for one place in PhD every year? You see, one thing I can advise for the PhD candidate: try to have publication when you're going to uh, to to you're going to enter to the to the PhD program. Because by the way, you have a master degree. You are a master degree holder, and you're going to enter to the PhD. Uh, you need to have minimum expectation and minimum requirement when you finish your master, you know. Therefore, um, this is my recommendation. But if I got to say that competition, you see some years we have, we have got number of, you know, applicants, some, some years we, we get less applicant. It's really a hard question to answer. Of course, it is competitive. Uh, but if you have very good CV and very good background, I really hope that you will become successful. Um, it's similar to the other places. Thank you for your answer, Professor. Are you one of those who select? Uh, you mean you mean the panel members? Yes, me and Professor Ahan, both of us, we are the panel members of, of the admission committee. Um, I'm not sure whether I answered the question correctly or not. Yerasil, you have had a question. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening. I want to thank you for uh, holding this yes. session. I want to ask about uh, I mean, I'm not uh, sure. Uh, do I want to study like software or hardware? And uh, if I apply the computer science degree, uh, is it possible for me to transfer to electrical engineering in the future? That's a very good question. That's a very good question because we are, um, okay, let me tell you, I believe that those people which they are in this room, they will join electrical and computer engineering after, after our presentation. Well, this, this is based on our experience, however. Yes, we have had candidates from robotics department and from computer science, which after first semester, they contacted us to move to the electrical and computer engineering. Well, they have their own reason. So uh, to move actually to electrical and EC department. Um, I can tell you that it's quite actually hard after your admission in that program to, to, to move to the other program. Do you know why? Because each and every um, department has got its own, um, you know, uh, category and number of seats. Because when you admitted uh, at Nazarbayev University, you already occupied that seat for that department. So when you occupied the seat, of course, department, both department, they are not happy that much. It depends. It depends that you move from one program to the other program because you occupied their seat. If you didn't want to continue, it was better that from the beginning you think about that. I understand that sometimes you will enter to the program and then you will feel that, oh, I, I really happy to go to the electrical engineering because uh, I don't know, those guys are working very closely with the industry and are gonna be involved in different projects in industry. But I'm saying that it's very tricky to move from one program to the other program. So far, uh, it was really hard. It should go to the committee. The head of department of your first department should agree. Then the head of department of second department is agreed. Then it goes to the uh, you know, um, committee in the school level. If everyone approved, maybe you can move from one program to the other program. That's why I can advise that, please um, focus a little bit more. And if it's possible, you go just for the program which you're gonna really continue with that. What is different between our department and computer science department? You see, Professor Ahan explained that um, computer science mainly focus over the theoretical part, focus over the protocols, 
um, maybe they focus on the data science. We mainly focus on practical boards. For example, if you're a computer engineer and then you know embedded systems, you're supposed um, you know, to work with the IoT practically. I mean, well, let, let me tell you one of my projects. So we have implemented IoT to manage energy, energy section for a smart city. You see, we work practically. So we need to develop and we need to program actually, you know, big elbow, we need to program actually, you know, different kind of devices to implement what was the knowledge in the computer. So uh, as a kind of industrial work, this is our difference. Um, our work more or less is more um, hands-on as Professor uh, Ahan said, uh, it's more practical. Computer science guy, it is a science. They will focus mainly on protocols, maybe on, um, you, know, um, you know, layers of the, of the, of the actually, you know, um, you know, computer. I mean, when I'm saying layers, I'm talking about the TC, PIP, and this sort of thing. Well, they are mainly program-based, but we are mainly actually, you know, uh, device-based. One more thing, um, I believe, this is my belief, by the way, my idea, that um, our student, our graduate, all of them are professional in computer engineering and computer science. This is, this is my understanding. From, from our graduate. Do you know why? Because I have many students, they do programming. Uh, they are working actually for power project, for energy projects, and they are very professional in IoT. They know all the protocols and everything. So we implemented project from here for the European actually, you know, industries. So this is the feedback which I've got from, from EC department. I'm not sure, definitely uh, there are very good programmers and very good graduate in computer science department as well. But of course, I support actually electrical, electrical and computer. Um, any question, guys? Any so question from chat room? Question. We had a question about immediate category. So for Bachelor 3, I think we missed uh, the answer. Or more Celine were asked, uh, is there any chance for getting a scholarship in bachelors without SAT? Um, as um, dear Mursaline, I sent you the link to our undergraduate programs uh, requirements. So a lot of categories, uh, we have several categories from which undergraduate students can apply for the program. So a lot, uh, the, the most of them requires the SAT test. As for new ed category, this, uh, the admission process is already closed in January. Maybe Aida can, Aida joined us. So she's a senior manager from Office of Enrollment Management. Uh, she, maybe she could help us to tell, uh, is it possible to get a scholarship in bachelor's without SAT here or either? Uh, hello, everybody. Professors, hi. Nice hello, to meet you. Hello, how are you doing? Nice to see you. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you, Professor. Uh, so um, for this question, first of all, for undergraduate programs, applicants should uh, select uh, the category for application. Nowadays, we have like six categories. Each category has uh, their in, uh, like requirements. So you can go to our website. Maybe Lunara can help us to put the uh, link for undergraduate admission requirements. And uh, applicants should choose, first of all, his category there and check the, uh, I mean, uh, check the requirements. For example, for uh, Olympic winners category, we don't need any SAT. For new, uh, NUET, NUETA, we call it. Um, for this category also, we don't need SAT. SAT we need only for transfer students and for SAT applicants. So uh, for others, we don't need SAT. Please go to link and check it, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Aida. Um, uh, 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 the participants, dear participants. Aida is very, very professional and she worked with us for many years. So she was even, um, you know, much, much longer time before us, she was here. So basically she's very professional. If you got any questions, she's the best person to answer. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so in terms of actually bachelor admission and master admission, you're welcome. And I'm really happy to see her because she's right now in Almaty, I think. Um, yes. um, uh, yeah, so we have got a question, guys, here. Uh, how many students did you join electrical engineering PhD? Well, um, last year, I think um, 
Well, the statistic shows that last year, I think that we admitted five people, if, uh, if uh, I'm not mistaken, I think we admitted five people. And a year before that, I think six people or five people. But typically, it depends. It depends to number of scholarships. Um, one year we admitted, I think, eight people or seven people. Uh, but these are the statistics which um, I can recall. Uh, yeah, any other question? On the new page, we have the information about generally PhD program in our school. So it's, uh, we, we should check it out to tell exactly for these uh, major how many students we have. Yerasil, I can see the raised hands. You can ask the question. But before we are going to Yerasil, Yerasil, please get ready your question. Uh, let me tell you, in electrical and computer engineering, we have very supportive environment. Well, when you join, you will understand. So we have very, very friendly colleagues, very good relation with the student, and uh, you know, very, very supportive actually atmosphere. Um, I've been a student many years ago. You are a student. You know that this supportive environment is quite actually significant to motivate the student to move forward as much as you know possible. So we try actually to meet this requirement at EC department. And uh, I can say that uh, over the last years, maybe we are uh, one of those best supportive department, uh, which we have very friendly actually environment uh, for, for, for education in all the levels, bachelor, master, and PhD. So this is something which I wanted to highlight because that, 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 that's quite actually significant for us. Uh, for electrical and uh, computing engineering. Yerasil, uh, please, we go for your question. Uh, my question is, if I had a bachelor's degree in another field, is it possible to apply uh, to EC department, like to the re related bachelor's degree? And that, that's does it work in a reverse question. order? That's a very good question, man. Thank you very much. Um, I should say that, yes. It is possible, uh, but you have to meet requirements and you have to convince panel members. Uh, because by the way, if there is someone gonna to come from, let's say, um, you know, let's say from physics to electrical engineering, then uh, the first thing which we will uh, look at to the, we will look, when we look at to the transcript, we're gonna to see that whether that guy has passed the electrical circuit theory or not. You know what I mean? So, and if he didn't pass that course, of course, then it's, uh, it's, it's not that much impressive. You know what I mean? So therefore, if you think that you can, you can see actually minimum requirements uh, in electrical engineering, yes, um, we have had experience from different disciplines to come to electrical, but I don't wanna say that chance is really high. It depends to, to your CV and your background. Thank you. Well, but but from electrical engineering, you can you can go to the other disciplines. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, somebody from MBA uh, or just MEM, they cannot move to electrical engineering. But I think that the opposite is possible. If you're electrical and computer engineering, you can go to many disciplines. Not only that, for getting the job, if you are electrical and computer engineering, you can get job in electrical discipline, in computer disciplines. Uh, in all industrial disciplines, wherever you go, they need electrical and computer engineering. Simple. Um, I'm, I'm too much supporting electrical and computer engineering now, Lonara. It's great, it's great <laughs> that you're supporting. But, but uh, <laughs> they already convinced me and <laughs> marketers yeah. to join. <laughs> and tomorrow you will join us. Uh, because, you know, we have, uh, I've seen, I've seen, um, uh, by the way, I've seen many students recently, they open company here in uh, North Sultan City, their office is in front of university and they grab very fantastic project from Wolf Bank. Great. Uh, from Wolf Bank, yes. Um, they have been our graduate. And um, there was another actually, you know, team which they opened another company, um, you know, uh, and they have been our graduate. So we are very closely working with the industry and uh, our faculty members are really supportive. I've seen our faculty members, they participate actually in, in, uh, in, in, in for consultation and for supporting to, if somebody gonna to go ahead after even graduation, they are very supportive. So that's why, um, um, that's why I'm saying, Donara. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, let's go to the next question, if there is any question. Uh, what is the number of likely admitted master students for this year? Actually, we don't know exact numbers, uh, as I know, because it depends on the number. Uh, so it's, it's not uh, open information right now, so it's usually later. Am I right? Yeah, let me add here, Ilnara. Yes, please. About the um, uh, grant numbers. So uh, actually for grant numbers, we it will be known uh, in May, probably, because we are waiting for the answer uh, from the uh, government of Republic of Kazakhstan. They will allocate the number of grants for Nazarbayev University, probably in the, at the end of April or in May. So then we will allocate it. Uh, I mean, a new management will allocate the number of grants among our schools. So uh, for now, that's why we cannot tell you <clears throat> exact number for each program. So it will be decided in May. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. And uh, for um, international uh, students, sorry, uh, uh, I think international same? student is the same, Ida. Yes, uh, we are waiting actually to get those uh, seats for international category as well. Ah, uh, yeah. For international uh, applicants, we have special internal grants. I mean, Abai Kunan Bai grants for especially if only for international gov uh, international students. And uh, some partial scholarship we have, uh, and some uh, intergovernmental. Uh, these three grants are for only for foreign students. But yeah, it will be like some uh, meeting, a new management, uh, like managing council will decide. We are waiting for for their decision for now. Okay, thank you. Oh, the next Somebody time. say a good things. Um, he said that uh, some good things about me and Professor Ahan. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Really appreciate. It. <laughs> this was the best comment, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> this is really true. Yes. We, we agree with it. <laughs> our professor is our, the best professor. <laughs> One of the best professor of our thank, school. Thank you. Thank you. I we really. We can no, ensure. I'm, I'm saying a local, international. We really have very, very fantastic environment at Nazarbayev University and very supportive colleagues. When you graduate from here, you will feel that uh, everyone will remain supportive for you. Uh, yeah. We have a still a student from 2016. They are in South Korea right now, but they communicate. They're going to open company over there. They communicate with us. We have had a chat each and every weekend. Uh, we never leave usually our students. So they will become our yeah. friend at the end. So, and that's similar for our colleagues. I mean, that's um, true. all of the colleagues, yeah. Okay. The next question is about the books does and you has its own books or your research for information from other books. So we have very good uh, library. I think it's not a problem to get uh, a book or a research that you need. Maybe you can add about it, your professor. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I was reading, sorry, I was reading actually uh, the chat. Uh, so it was the question about the books. I told that our library is very well equipped. And yeah, yeah. Well, at Nazarbayev University, we have a very fantastic uh, library. Um, uh, well, and I, I wanted to appreciate, use this chance to appreciate library and whatever we order it, honestly, honestly, over the last years, they did their best and they purchased it. I never experienced such a kind of things in all over the world that whatever you order, they try to purchase it. Always a library in the other universities, they'll bring excuse. Um, there is no money. I mean, we have one version. Always there is discussion, always. But here, honestly, whatever we um, requested, they purchase it. Thank you very much. And in terms of the MSc program and PhD program, guys, we have handbook. Um, um, I really appreciate if uh, Lonara, along with the presentation, she can share handbook for you. Detail information is inside the handbook, including the courses, including all of those uh, levels, marks, how you select actually professor, what are the criteria actually to select the thesis, what is the format of the thesis, everything is in the handbook. If you look at it, it will take maybe 30 minutes to, to just to scan that. Um, it would be very, very supportive for both master and bachelor candidates. 
uh, there is a question about uh, whether all admitted master international students consider for a scholarship. Um, I should say that usually we offer to international students if we have a scholarship seat available, scholarship seat available. I mean, so usually this is the case uh, because uh, we're gonna to support international students uh, when they come here, they just focus over their study. I'm not sure about this year. Let's see how it goes, but it used to be. So let's see how it goes this year. It's really hard question for me to answer now, but it used to be, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We have got another actually good comment. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I really hope that wherever you are, you are successful. I wish I can see you, uh, me and Professor Aham Bosov from EC department. We wish we can see you actually at uh, EC department very soon. I believe you will join us hopefully, but um, apart from this, wherever you go, I wish the best for you. Uh, we are here to support you. So basically, and uh, our colleagues, Lorara, Aida, and other colleagues, Alia, they are always actually supportive. So whenever you email them. Yeah, so let me uh, use this pause and uh, to tell the results. So Aijan has three right answers. Yarasel, two. Kojahmet uh, Abdugapar, four. Samson, two. Marcelin, four. James, two. So these are our winners. Uh, dear winners, could you please contact me? You can write me your email or mobile number. I will call you back uh, tomorrow to decide how to give you the praises. Congratulations. So, thank you. Congratulations to all of you. So we already uh, had a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> out of our uh, schedule so if you have any other questions uh, you can write us i will send you again our email you can contact us you can ask your questions thank you thank you everyone oh uh, okay thank you dear professors this uh, presentation is really informative and uh, as we are not uh, we don't have a lot of participants but this recording is also will be very helpful. Thank you for your time. Dear participants, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me today's presentation. We are, will be really happy to see among our students. Please apply. Please. So email, I already write it here. Dear Marcelina, I'll send it to you also. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lunara. Thank you, Aida. Thank you, Alia and Rinta.